Welcome to the fourth episode of Accessibility Now, stories about accessibility in Georgia. Accessibility Now is a podcast produced by the Statewide Independent Living Council of Georgia. I'm your host, Matt Shedd, and today we have a special episode for you. We're featuring an interview with recently deceased disability rights advocate Galen Toodle. He worked at Walton Options, The Sill, and Augusta, and also fought for voting rights for people with disabilities, a timely issue as we have elections just around the corner. We talk about his life's work, his struggles, his victories, and the importance of voting rights. This interview was conducted in September of 2021. Galen passed away September 10th, 2022. My name is Galen Tudor. I serve as an independent living advocate coordinator over here at Walton Options uh, with a focus on advocacy. Uh, We are a center for independent living. Uh, we serve uh, 13 counties here in uh, this area, and uh, I've been here approximately five years, the uh, best job I ever had uh, because of the work that we do, uh, but uh, I also serve as the uh, co-chair for Rev Up Georgia, which is a coalition of self-advocates, uh, disability rights organizations, allies, and like-minded people. Our mission is is to register, educate, vote, teach our people to use their power. Uh, We believe uh, in the Centers for Independent Living Movement that advocacy is at the heart of what we do because we know that we have to make sure that we keep our needs and our issues and our concerns out there on the forefront. I've been allowed to uh, blossom here at Walton because uh, our leadership believe also that advocacy is a key component of what we do. And they've allowed me uh, latitude to really grow and uh, push advocacy over here at Walton. I also serve as the first vice president of the National Federation of the Blind of Georgia. And uh, we have a chapter here, which we call the CSRA chapter. And that focus is also uh, in line with what we do in the IL movement, which is empowering uh, blind people to live the life that they want. As I said, it's the best job I've ever had, and I've worked for 30 years. I worked for the Department of Defense, Department of the Air Force, and I thought I was done with working until I got here, and uh, I got a chance to meet Tiffany, and I had a chance to go on an interview here, and uh, it's been gravy ever since. It's been a a great experience. My parents were both blind. And uh, I was raised up in a little small town in southeast Georgia. And my parents recognized early, well, they they knew it all the time, that if we were to stay there, uh, when I say we, it was me and my younger brother, that, uh, you know, we wouldn't flourish. So I had to learn to pick tobacco. I learned how to pick cotton uh, and all of these different things. Uh, Of course, it was an agrarian type community. My father had me out there doing all that stuff. And he told me later that the reason he had me doing that, because he knew that if I, if he put me out there, that would probably be an uh, impetus for me wanting to get an education. <laughs> and so he was right. <laughs> uh, and here I am. Uh, neither one of them had a high school education, but he worked. Uh, he felt, you know, he had six kids. Uh, and he had to do what he had to do, uh, which I mean, chipping boxes, which is something that you guys may not understand. It's what they call turpentine. He did that as a blind man. Uh, he used to uh, work in tobacco barns as a blind man, hanging tobacco. Uh, and he taught me how to work in, in the fields. Uh, so uh, my mother, she raised, stayed home and raised the kids. Uh, and all we had was his word. And uh, he was known in the community. In other words, if someone was running for, and this is where I got my a lot of my advocacy from, uh, when there was an election, uh, they all uh, descended on my father's house because they wanted to get him to support them and get the community behind them. When there was an advocacy event, uh, I remember back uh, in the early 70s, uh, one of the advocates, Hosea Williams, came to town. Nobody wanted to talk to Hosea. He was talking about uh, the, the 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 inequities at Reesville State Prison. He came to the community. No one wanted to talk to him, but my daddy did. He came and sat on my daddy's front porch, and uh, they talked about the movement. So I learned early that you have to push for what you want. Uh, I learned early that you can be uh, poor and yet still be a man or a human being 
And uh, the, your disability does not have to be the end all. In other words, it doesn't have to stop you from living the life you want. Though he recently worked to advance the rights of people with disabilities, Galen didn't find his place in the independent living movement until later in his life. His struggles gave him the resolve and the desire to want to help people better their situations. But uh, a lot of times back during my younger years, I really, I shied away from uh, my disability. I shied away from the disabled community. I didn't figure I needed them, yeah, which is uh, common in the disability community. People sometimes they, they have hidden disabilities or mine is not necessarily hidden because you look at my eyes and you can tell I got something going on. But at the same time, uh, I shied away. It ended up costing me. It took me a little longer to finish school. And I really didn't know how to ask for accommodations uh, while I was working with the feds. And I didn't really want to ask for any anyway. And so I, I just uh, I floated along. Once I finished working and I got here and I, I would be going to some of our national conferences in 1998. As a matter of fact, I went to a national convention for the National Federation of the Blind and they held it at the Hyatt Regency in Atlanta. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't think I slept for seven days. I may have slept a couple of hours, but back in the day, anyway, when I was working for the Army, we used to work all day and stay up all night. So yeah, I could do that. But yeah, seven days, that was it. 1998 is when I decided, you know, I'm going to get into this movement. Uh, I was imp- so impressed by, uh, you know, the work that they did, the good times that I had. Uh, you know, these people are all right. It was like a church revival, man. It was like... Uh, a revival is where the term means, you know, a reviving of, a revitalization or reinvigorating oneself. Well, for me, it was an invigorating because I never had seen nothing like that before. I saw blind doctors, blind lawyers, blind engineers. I saw everyday swingers that were blind. And these people didn't have no shame about who they were. You know, I, I, I saw the sponsors. I mean, everybody was there supporting uh, this organization. Uh, we had great speakers, breakout sessions. But the feeling that I, I, I felt was, you know, my people, we can do anything. Wow, I was I, uh, doing all this uh, hiding for so long. And as I said, I saw blind folk from every spectrum. I just felt like, you know, we are somebody and that I didn't have to, I could be me. I could be a a, a blind person. Uh, I started using my cane because I didn't use a cane, even though I can see some, uh, uh, a cane is an extension. Uh, So I started breaking out my cane. I just began to talk about my experiences. Yeah, it was was a feeling of euphoria. And like I said, uh, I partied all night, worked all day. It was just something I wanted to be a part of that. Uh, because, uh, again, we would do it. The, the National Federation of the Blind is the oldest, largest uh, blind consumer organization in this country. We have affiliates in every state. Uh, we have approximately uh, 7,000 people at our convention on a normal basis. Uh, and as I said, they are all types of folk and uh, successful folk. Uh, but... It was just a feeling of euphoria. It was a feeling of uh, belonging. It was a feeling, uh, a feeling of empowerment because I didn't have to hide anything, and I and I know that our people can make change. I was seeing how a lot of our folk with disabilities uh, were being left behind. A lot of the special schools that existed during my time, for instance, Georgia Academy for the Blind, which is where I went to school, uh, the focus has changed. So a lot of times our kids, when they finish high school, uh, they still aren't at the point where they can go out and be successful. So I started seeing that kind of stuff, and it gave me a a desire to to want to give back because I saw that everybody didn't have, and I, I don't mean this in a negative way, but Even though I shied away from my disability, it took strength to do so because I had to struggle to make it. But these kids were being put in situations where they should have been getting what they were supposed to get, and they still aren't getting it. So it got my attention, and it it, it touched me in a way that made me want to get out and do what I do. And uh, my mission is that every disabled person, I want to be a conduit for them so that they can ultimately get to where they want to be. Uh, we believe in self-motivation. Everything is uh, that we do, it's a two-party 
thing. In other words, you got to do your part as well. If I see that you're wanting to do, uh, then you can best believe that I'm going to dive in and I'm going to help. But my people not getting, being at the places where they needed to be, uh, not being heard on the legislative side, it just gave me that desire. So here I am. But when it came to what made Galen the way that he was, he would always take it back to that loving household in rural Georgia and Glenville in the 60s and 70s. When we were young, as I said, we grew up in a small town and we were poor people, but uh, we had a lot of uh, a lot of love in our house and our house was the center of the neighborhood. My parents fed more neighborhood kids than, than, than folk with uh, who were supposedly in a better place. They taught us about integrity. They taught us about uh, a community type approach to living uh, and that everybody can do something. And uh, I took that and uh, I, w- I rolled with that. And they were really powerful and strong people. And, and, and even though uh, we lived in a town where they weren't really able to work full time jobs or do anything like that because of their situation. They never compromised on the character. And uh, I got that from them. And I, I learned that uh, I may be poor, but if we are somebody. It's a cliche, uh, but Jesse Jackson used to say that, but it's true. I tell all the people that here, the consumers, the advocates, you know, we are uh, who we say we are. We are somebody. And our rights are civil rights. And if uh, a lot of times when we press through and get uh, something new put in place, it ultimately becomes the norm for everybody else. So uh, we take pride in what we do and uh, we push for the change that we want to see. And that's that's my mantra. Yeah, because it can be hard sometimes. Uh, but I learned that a movement does require sacrifice. And what I mean by that is, is that uh, sometimes you have to be willing to stand for something. And sometimes when you stand for something, depending on the community that you're in or the people that you're dealing with, they can try to hurt you. Uh, but coming from where I come from, you can't hurt me. I've been to the bottom, you know, and I know how to live on the bottom. My biggest thing that I'm trying to say is, is that you have to stand for something. And you have to understand that a movement does require sacrifice. Uh, you may have a doctor's appointment today. And there's a meeting also at the Capitol today. Sometimes, unless it's a, you know, depending on the type of appointment it is, you 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 know, if you go into the to the dermatologist, you may have to reschedule. It's important that you be over there at the Capitol or you be at the uh, hearing. Uh, so you know, you got to do what you got to do. And I always try to impress upon them that everybody can do something. Everybody can't talk like Galen, but you can pass out a piece of paper. You can sit at a table. You know, you can tell your story. I used to work in the field and I was a good tobacco picker. And uh, a lot of times I'd be up front going on down and uh, I'd have to go back to the sled and I'll never forget it. Uh, It was about a hundred degrees out there and I had a big arm of tobacco taking it back to the sled. And when you go in like that, you know, you break off some of the leaves going back. And this guy pulled up the farm, the owner, uh, B.G. Rogers, he pulled up and he rolled the window down and all that cool air just rushed out on me, right? And he was telling me, uh, Galen, you dr- you breaking off all of the back. I'm way down, you know, and, and it kind of hit me. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to go to college. And I'm going to get me an education so I can come back and tell these kind of people what to do. And that's what it did. I mean, that was part of the motivation. Now, I, I, I was a wrestler. And uh, I, I, had a, I, had, I was always, I grew up in the era when Muhammad Ali was alive in boxing so he was my idol he and my daddy and uh so i, I was always aggressive man i had to get out of that time <laughs> when you're in a town when everybody knows one time a guy we were advocating for uh getting a, a street name change the mlk which was back in the 80s and the guy told me he said uh you know Gabe, you got to remember your wife rides up and down these streets at night you know that, that's the type of town it was it, it didn't stop me now I try to go back and I give back to the town. Uh, a matter of fact, I got a program plan for them coming up where we're going to go down and do some voter education, voter registration, uh, vaccination education, uh, because uh, these guys, they didn't participate in the census. Uh, they don't vote. A lot of them aren't registered. So uh, 
I, I, I have a heart to, I got to do that. I want to go back and give back to that, to that community. And it's the Walton Options, the independent living movement allows me to do all that good stuff. We, we are going through renovations over here. We, we've rebranded. Uh, we have a new uh, uh, saying, we're, we're boldly being who we are. And I love it. And I put that in, in, in my spiel because, uh, yeah, we want to boldly be whoever, who we are. And uh, we're here in this community. We're here in this state. We're here in this country. And uh, our rights are just as important as anybody else's. For instance, right now, the voting uh, rights, well, we call it voter suppress here in Georgia. And a lot of times people look at it and they'll say, well, how is it going to impact the disabled folk? Well, it, it impacts us, first of all, as blind voters. We were totally disenfranchised anyway. As disabled voters, a lot of times we live out in rural areas. The transportation, uh, the support systems are going to be different. A lot of times they're going to be non-existent, so you have to make your own. Uh, the voting uh, rights bill is something that uh, is very near and dear uh, to me for a number of reasons. I'm black, I'm blind, I have family members who are disabled, so that stuff is important to me. And so I address it. I have been blessed to meet with Vice President Kamala Harris uh, at Clark AU. Uh, this was not a photo op. Uh, this was a an actual meeting, a sit down. It was myself, Senators Warnock, Ossoff, uh, Cedric Richmond, uh, Simone Sanders, uh, the Vice President, and three other uh, advocates. And we talked about uh, voting uh, rights. And I, again, Walter Nelson has allowed me to get in these spaces. Uh, I serve on uh, the White House's Office of Public Engagement and Disability Council. I also serve uh, on Stacey Abrams' uh, Fair Fights Disability Council. And uh, as like I said, the chairman of Rebel Georgia. So I'm all in uh, to try to ensure that we as disabled uh, Black voters have access to voting, uh, free, fair, secure voting process. Galen was involved in many facets of community activism, including, as he alluded to there, the fight for accessible voting systems. Galen's local and statewide work eventually caught the eye of the people in Washington, and his advocacy went nationwide. There's a lot of things that keep me busy. Uh, I'm also, we have what we call Grassroots Connectors Gen Z program, where I have, uh, we have mentees. I'm a, for instance, I serve as a mentor. Uh, we have mentees and we give them a little stipend so that they can go out and, and put on programs and promote. We have a vaccination outreach program where we provide uh, funding to people who provide rides for folks to get their vaccinations. Also, we like uh, we have an education piece on that as well. So a lot of stuff going on. Keeps me busy. And then right here, local at home, we have a transportation initiative here as we're dealing with our local public transit because of the uh, inequities in that system. So uh, advocacy is uh, alive and well. And the independent living movement is alive and well. And uh, we believe, again, that nothing about us without us. So we're out here. I got a personal invitation to the White House for the 31st uh, ADA signing. And uh, that was a great experience, too, as a matter of fact. Uh, I was a special guest, me and my wife. Uh, there were other advocates, Dom Kelly from Fair Fight, who want to well, work with him on another council, disability council. But uh, he called my name. I got to stand up, and he talked a little bit about my work. And uh, I got to come in through the West Wing of the White House. I had my own Marine uh, uh, agenda. And it was cool stuff. And, and what I tell my people, and I call all of them my people, anybody with a disability, is that, uh, you know, this is the, that's what work gets you. Because I don't know anybody up there in D.C. Yeah. You know, so somebody else had to see the work that I was doing or the work that we we're doing because it takes a village to do the work and ask me to come up. But everybody, I mean, we need all, we need all of us to speak 
I don't have to be the one to speak. I think there are a lot of uh, great stories and a lot of great intelligent people in our movement who can probably articulate things better than me. But mm-hmm. the deal is uh, by hook or by crook. And I said that to the vice president when we were meeting, right? <laughs> she said, uh, she said, no, but Gail, I'm hoping it's more by hook than crook. I said, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I mean that. But, uh, uh, but wasn't nobody, wasn't no press in there. Me and uh, Warnock, we pumped elbows. He said, yeah, I gave him, but you know. Uh, yeah, but it was a great time. I, I mean, these people, Osoff, and uh, they tell me anytime I need them, you know, to, to give them a call. I'm not there just to be there. When, when I'm in a room, I'm not happy just to be there. I'm not I'm not into photo ops. I'm not into uh, saying, well, I was there. Uh, I'm into uh, legitimate conversations. And I pull them out in the hallway. Uh, and I talked to them outside, which is what I did with Elsoff and Warnock. I talked frankly to the vice president. She asked me about coalitions. And in our movement, in the IL movement, coalitions are critical. Uh, and I was telling her that, yes, we do a great job here in Georgia uh, as it relates to coalition building, because uh, that is how we get out, get the message out. We've learned that, you know, community partners, uh, networking relationships, is how we, we get it done because in the disability community, uh, support systems are critical. Knowing where to go, who to talk to, how to get there, uh, sometimes requires more than one way to do it. Uh, in other words, I may have to get my sister to take me over to the aunt Linda's house so Linda can take me because she has an accessible vehicle. Or, you know, I, I'm a blind person. I can't read the... Uh, the information out there, but I know over there at Walton Options, they have uh, someone who can assist me uh, with reading my stuff. Coalition building is important, and uh, that is how we get things done. I'm all for that. We believe, though, that you're not, we're not going to be in a coalition, though, where you do all the talking and you do all the uh, strategizing or you do all the uh, structuring and we just sitting there. No, we believe that nothing about us without us. That's real. Uh, we firm on it, and uh, we work with people. And uh, again, support systems are critical. Networking is critical, uh, especially in the time that we live in today. Empowerment isn't just about voting, though. It's also about changing systems and improving the situation of people with disabilities across the country. Galen knew this very well and it reflected in the many programs that he participated in. Uh, America is basically, what, 90 Ninety percent micro businesses, uh, they're small businesses, and uh, why can't we do that? So these are all avenues that we use to empower our people. It's important that information is disseminated, uh, and it's important that we drill it in them. I, I don't mean that in a, you know, in a drill sergeant type way, but I do believe that you know repetition is a way how we empower our people. Uh, because everybody's not at the same place. We recognize that, but at the same time, again, as I said earlier, everybody can do something. And understand that in this thing, sometimes there are little victories. And when there's a victory, you want to stop for the amens. You want to stop, smell the roses. You want to stop. And uh, that helps keep you invigorated. Those are the little things that I try to uh, pass along. And I, I also believe, again, that there's dignity in work and that uh, together we can do anything. And we'll wrap up today's episode there. That concludes Accessibility Now's special election episode, our interview with Galen Toodle. May he rest in peace. And as we look back on Galen's life, we do stop for a moment to say our amens and to show our gratitude for his tireless, fearless work. But we remember that Galen's work, all of our work, isn't finished. As Election Day approaches, remember to get out and vote. Make your voice heard. Vote for the rights of people with disabilities this Election Day. And remember Galen each time you go to the polls. Thank you for listening to Accessibility Now, stories about accessibility in Georgia. Accessibility Now is a podcast produced by the Statewide Independent Living Council of Georgia. If you want to find out more about that organization, you can visit us at silkga.org. That's S-I-L-C-G-A dot O-R-G. This episode was edited and produced by Desi Gillespie. And I just want to close by reminding you that a Georgia that includes everyone is better for all of us.